Good evening, and welcome to Big Z Sports' presentation of high school softball. Tonight in this IVC matchup, the Sandy Valley Cardinals host the Newcomerstown Trojans. 
Tonight's game is presented by the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Wayne Door, Wood Electric, Wendy's, Unified Insulation, and McInturf Realty. Now let's head to the field with Big Z Sports. Welcome into Sandy Valley High School as Big Z Sports is bringing you IVC softball. The Cardinals are playing host to the Trojans of Newcomerstown on a, we'll call it balmy Friday evening, <laughs> breezy Friday evening. Big Z Sports here on your Wood Electric pregame show. And a big thank you to the Claxon Communications crew as well for bringing you all this live stream coverage throughout the entire evening. To my right today will be Mr. Aaron Stump. And Stumpy, I got to say, it's always great to get out to a diamond. Beautiful day, just a lot of wind. That's the only thing that's uh, the dampener on this. Well, we were just talking before the game how nice the sunshine is, not a cloud in the sky. And, uh, again, it's always nice to have a breeze, but that breeze is chilly tonight. And today it is blowing straight in. Straight in from left field. <laughs> so, again, uh, beautiful press box facility here at Sandy Valley and uh, very happy to be inside it today. Well, I can't wait to have any hard hit ball down the left field line. I'll yell, swing and a drive, and it barely got out of the infield. <laughs> we'll see how that affects the game. Anything hit off to the right side. Side might uh, If you catch that tailwind, might end up going a long, long way. But regardless, it's an interesting matchup we've got between Sandy Valley and Newcomerstown. Last season, Newcomerstown picked up the 2-0 uh, season series victory. They got a pretty convincing win in their first game against the Cardinals. Next time around, it was actually Sandy Valley who led late, but ultimately could not hold on, so Newcomerstown swept them. But this is the intriguing part of this. For that Newcomerstown team last year, they were young then. They're young now. They only lost one player from last year's team because they only had one senior. No seniors on this squad this year. Well, and again, we talked to really it's the, the start of the season. Everyone's still trying to find themselves right now, um, kind of seeing where everybody's kind of at. Pitchers are going to you know try to get loose today. A lot of factors playing in the front part of that season. So it'll be interesting how the, that young team uh, – takes uh, care of business today and deals with the elements, and we'll see what happens. And for uh, Sandy Valley on the other side, they've got three seniors, three juniors, and a whole host of sophomore and freshmen out there as well. So they still kind of have a little bit of youth in there as well. And, you know, uh, we, we, you're going to hear more from Coach Geiger coming up here shortly, but she said there was a lot of growing pains at certain moments last year, but she felt that they are moving in the right direction, and they are very, very excited to have this home matchup here. I mean, this is a Sandy Valley team we saw post of really nice wins last season. Yeah, and again, we've seen them come out of the parking lot too, and they just look real confident today. And again, I think a lot of it is that senior and junior leadership. Uh, you're putting nine girls out in the field, and you're going to have some of those underclassmen in the mix a little bit. And again, it's a very nice luxury to have for your coach. Just keeps the team relaxed and playing really free. Well, stick around because we've got more of your Wood Electric pregame show upcoming. We are going to step aside for our first time out, and when we come back, you're going to be in the dugout with the coach brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. We'll start off with the newcomers, Town Trojans. Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications are back after this. Hi, I'm Zach Motais with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Finding your perfect vehicle can be frustrating. The selection process, working out a deal, the pushy salespeople. Well, Sarsha and Ford of Leansburg takes away all of those frustrations by offering transparent pricing, a large new and pre-owned inventory, and salespeople that you'll consider a friend by the time your sale is complete. Sarsha and Ford of Leansburg is proud to have won the Ford President's Award three consecutive years based solely on that customer satisfaction. And you can see the difference at 300 West Lisbon Street in Waynesburg or at sarshanofwaynesburg.com, where community and customers always come first. When you're traveling to the game, there's a great way to see your directional map on a new radio from Cartoons in New Philly. Just plug in your phone and all your maps and apps and Bluetooth devices are right on your radio. Cartoons carries a wide selection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto radios from all of the name brands. From 7-inch screen radios to 10-inch screen radios, Cartoons has you covered. Stop in and see them on display and let Cartoons give you a demonstration. Cartoons, 517 West High Avenue in New Philly. Be there! Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400? Thad here for TMK Valley Propane. 
The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way to TMK, service with a personal touch. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events in their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Welcome back into your Wood Electric pregame show. Big Z Sports bringing you high school softball out of the IVC. The Sandy Valley Cardinals hosting the Newcomerstown Trojans. We'll go in the dugout with the coach brought to you by the Cush Financial Group and its head coach for Newcomerstown, Lee Fish. Coach, uh, early season softball, always a great thing to see. How are you guys feeling? I know you return a lot of players from last year. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking good. We, we, we don't have any seniors. Though. That's the only problem. I wish we had a little more, but our, our juniors are filling the important roles they've been stepping in for us and I think we're going to look good you know we're it's a tough league with Strasburg and Kanawha Valley both in your in your conference and that makes it rough for anybody but I, I think we're competitive I think we'll be all right we're young but we'll be all right now if I'm not mistaken last when we talked to you last year was kind of a similar situation you know you were young and we always said it's trial by fire how much right. did you see that kind of growth moving into a new year well because last year we only had one senior so we're, we were we've been sophomore freshman strong for now our freshmen are sophomores and so and our juniors so it, it, we're just young compared to everybody else but i mean we got some travel ball girls that are used to playing up to the higher level so and they're good leaders you know cam and larissa we got some good leaders on the team so they're they're, they're filling the good roles that, for us now for the approach on the mound for the trojans i'm i'm pretty sure it's probably the same one that we saw last year correct yeah it's kaylee watson um she's she'll be a she's a sophomore now so she you know like i said young we're young and it's it's just what we got to do with what we got, you know, but it's she's been doing good for us this year. So and then that's what you'll, hopefully she does good tonight. <laughs> and uh, during the off season, because we're still obviously in the very early stages of this year, uh, what were you guys working on the most? You know, just getting those reps is always a big thing, especially when you have youth. But was there any specific kind of key of emphasis that you guys had? Um, we're, we're focused on batting, you know, because uh, like I said, we're we, we're going to be weaker on the offensive side. So, I mean, it just, it's just what it is. So we got to, we worked on our batting a lot this year. This, this off season, we were in the cage a lot. So hopefully that, you know, maybe our pitching is a little weaker on some days. The bats come alive and they keep us in these games. Well, thank you for your time, Coach. Okay. Good luck to the Trojans. Thank you. thank you. Head Coach Lee Fish for the Newcomerstown Trojans brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. Stick around. We're going to have Sandy Valley softball on the way. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. The past 30 years, the residents in and around the Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff of McInturf Realty for buying and selling their residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of those communities, there is nothing better than high school sports. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McInturf Realty, 330-364-SOLD. Or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sugg with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com volunteer. Thank you. 
If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Welcome back into the Wood Electric pregame show. Big Z Sports bringing you IVC softball. The Sandy Valley Cardinals are hosting the Newcomerstown Trojans. We'll go in the dugout with the coach, brought to you by the Cush Financial Group, and it is head coach Courtney Geiger. Coach, uh, early on in the season, I know you guys are excited to get back out here. Uh, tell me a little bit about this matchup coming in here, how you guys feel after the first few games. First few games, we really had some ups and downs. Uh, our team is a little bit younger, but we do have some upperclassmen that have helped us out this year and throughout the years. So they're really coming together as a team, kind of building that fire, building that um, kind of uniformism amongst the uh, younger girls. But it's like a whole different team coming in from last year. Last year, Newcomers Town, they kind of dropped us in the last inning. We were ahead, and then in the fifth, they ended up scoring three runs to get the win. So we kind of have a little bit of revenge. We're excited to get back and get at them and see what we can do today. That's kind of the beauty of it, too. You know, whenever you guys, maybe last year, didn't perform exactly where you wanted to be, you know, having that uh, room for growth is always a positive thing, and there's always room for growth. What did you see in the off season in terms of that growth where it was, seemed to be the most successful? In the off season, we always participate in a winter league, and this year, especially during the summer and moving in through the season, we really hit in the weight room. The girls kind of bought into that, so we've seen definitely a lot of big improvements with that and focusing on some of the smaller details of the game and really honing in on those small skills that help build towards the ultimate goal of being a successful team in the IVC. And looking across the diamond at Newcomerstown, pretty much the exact same team for the most part that you guys faced last year in those two games. Uh, so what do you know about them? Um, basically, we've kind of been looking back on last season. We looked into what they did against Malvern this week. Um, a lot of things we noticed was they do have everybody coming back. They didn't really lose much last year. I know Lee has done a great job building the program from the start. We really need to make sure we focus at the at-bats. and. The we did a great job Monday of kind of staying focused and getting out of situations that we got into and then struggled with that again, um, kind of didn't go our way on Wednesday. So today we're really focusing on coming in, staying focused, everybody contributing and kind of keeping our heads high and being able to get out of situations that might occur throughout the game. Well, thank you for your time, Coach. Good luck to the Cardinals. Thank you. Head coach Courtney Geiger for the Sandy Valley Cardinals brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. Stick around. We're going to wrap up your Wood Electric pregame show and get to the night's first pitch. Fishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Fishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events and their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. Hey homeowners, are you ready to give your home a spring makeover? The Wayne Door Annual Spring Sale is happening April 1st through the 6th. Get ready to save big on garage doors, entry doors, windows, and more. It's the perfect time to enhance your curb appeal and security without breaking the bank. Visit our Dover and Cambridge showrooms to work with our team of experts. Let's make that spring dream a reality. And don't forget, for every $500 spent, enter for a chance to win one of three amazing prizes. Visit WayneDoor.com for more details, and we'll see you April 1st through the 6th for the Wayne Door Annual Spring Sale. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. 
Kush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Kush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Kush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit kushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome back to your Wood Electric pregame show, Big Z Sports. Just a few minutes away now from the night's first pitch brought to you by Buckeye Career Center. The Sandy Valley Cardinals host the Newcomerstown Trojans. IVC softball, very excited to be able to broadcast this one. And something you uh, made a little observation about there, uh, Stump. The sun always seems to play a factor early on in these games. Yeah, the right side of this field, uh, especially if uh, first base is taken one either from third or short, is going to have an interesting uh, time tonight. So especially as the uh, sun continues to go down tonight. But I don't think anybody's going to be complaining uh, about that sun being up today. So we're, uh, we're ready to play some ball. You need some sunglasses. You need the eye black. You need the eye black <laughs> tape and anything else that you could possibly find to reflect that color as or the sun coming in, I mean. And, uh, you know, taking a look at this matchup, it, it's early season, so it's almost impossible to tell exactly what you're going to get out of a showdown. But, you know, we know with Newcomerstown returning so much of what they had last season, we know the amount of players at Sandy Valley return themselves. You know, they got three really good seniors on this team as well. I'm really intrigued and looking forward to how this matchup is going to be shaping or shaking out as we will move things along into your starting lineups for the game. Of course, your starting lineups this season brought to you by Wendy's and Stump. Could you start with the visiting newcomers town Trojans? Because I gave you the wrong <laughs> one, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, batting first, uh, shortstop number one, Matty Kellish batting second and playing third base, number 22, Larissa Stahl at second, number 11, Alyssa Barker at first, number 17, Cam Dorland. Next up is going to be the catcher, number two, Bree Little. Then in the pitching circle, number nine, Kaylee Watson, followed by center fielder, double zero, Brandy Morris, right fielder, number 29, Riley Johnson, and finally, follow or last up is the left fielder, number 24, Michaela McConnell. Thank you for that. Those are your starting lineups brought to you by Wendy's for Newcomers Town. As for the home Sandy Valley Cardinals, starting off at shortstop, it's number five, Peyton Nicholson. Then in the number two spot, it's number four. She's the third baseman. It's Nadia Douglas. In center field, number 21, Breeley Philo. Then behind the plate, number 10, Teresa Petro. Your pitcher today on the mound is Bella Mead. She wears number three, bats fifth. Then it's Bree Beckett, the first baseman. She wears number eight. McKenna Burke is your second baseman, wearing number 24. Number six is Lizzie Pomeski, your designated player, batting eighth. And then at ninth, it is Octavia Daisy, the left fielder. She wears number 12. And your flex and playing right field is number 14, Logan Maley. That is your starting lineups brought to you by Wendy's. And we are going to be wrapping up our Wood Electric pregame show here shortly, and we'll have to step aside for the uh, national anthem and such before we get to the night's first pitch. If you have not done so, be sure to subscribe to the Big Z Sports YouTube channel. You will get notified when we go live for broadcasts just as these. It is your one stop for all your high school sports coverage in Z country. Totally free, thanks to all of our sponsors. Yeah, again, uh, really want to thank all our sponsors. Again, these opportunities that these kids have to play high school ports. Thank all our ADs. You know, thank all the volunteers here. And it, it takes a lot of people to put these on. So appreciate everyone that steps up year in, year out and uh, helps us put these on. And, of course, also follow along with all the action happening in high school athletics on the Big Z Sports Facebook page and all of our social medias. We will step aside, and when we return, it will be your first pitch. Sandy Valley hosts Newcomers Town coming up after this. Find your path to success at Buckeye Career Center. Buckeye students earned over 3,000 industry-recognized credentials this past school year, and over 130 students participated in our school-to-work program or an internship at a local business. Let us help you get a jump start on your future in a career of landscaping and turf management, pharmacy technician, HVACR, CAD development and design, or any of our over 30 programs. Enroll today for next school year by visiting BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. 
Hishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events and their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400? Thad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way to TMK, service with a personal touch. Hey homeowners, are you ready to give your home a spring makeover? The Wayne Door Annual Spring Sale is happening April 1st through the 6th. Get ready to save big on garage doors, entry doors, windows, and more. It's the perfect time to enhance your curb appeal and security without breaking the bank. Visit our Dover and Cambridge showrooms to work with our team of experts. Let's make that spring dream a reality. And don't forget, for every $500 spent, enter for a chance to win one of three amazing prizes. Visit waynedoor.com for more details, and we'll see you April 1st through the 6th for the Wayne Door Annual Spring Sale. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. When you're traveling to the game, there's a great way to see your directional map on a new radio from Cartoons in New Philly. Just plug in your phone, and all your maps and apps and Bluetooth devices are right on your radio. Cartoons carries a wide selection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto radios from all of the name brands. From 7-inch screen radios to 10-inch screen radios, Cartoons has you covered. Stop in and see them on display and let Cartoons give you a demonstration. Cartoons, 517 West High Avenue in New Philly. Be there. 
Find your path to success at Buckeye Career Center. Buckeye students earned over 3,000 industry-recognized credentials this past school year, and over 130 students participated in our school-to-work program or an internship at a local business. Let us help you get a jump start on your future in a career of landscaping and turf management, pharmacy technician, HVACR, CAD development and design, or any of our over 30 programs. Enroll today for next school year by visiting BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Finding your perfect vehicle can be frustrating. The selection process, working out a deal, the pushy salespeople. Well, Sarshone Ford of Waynesburg takes away all of those frustrations by offering transparent pricing, a large new and pre-owned inventory, and salespeople that you'll consider a friend by the time your sale is complete. Sarshone Ford of Waynesburg is proud to have won the Ford President's Award three consecutive years based solely on that customer satisfaction. And you can see the difference at 300 West Lisbon Street in Waynesburg or at sarshoneofwaynesburg.com, where community and customers always come first. Welcome back as we get set to round out your Wood Electric pregame show. Big Z Sports bringing you high school softball action with the Sandy Valley Cardinals hosting the new Comerstown Trojans. Real quick, we'll run through your starting lineups again, and this time I'll offer you a warning stump. You want to do the uh, the visiting new Comerstown Trojans? <laughs> uh, Lee Dobbs, Maddie Kellish, followed by Larissa Stahl. Next up, Alyssa Barker, followed by Cam Dorland. Bree Little up next, followed by Kaylee Watson, Brandy Morris, Riley Johnson, and Michaela McConnell. Thank you for that. Of course, your starting lineup's brought to you by Wendy's for the Sandy Valley Cardinals, starting and leading off it is Peyton Nicholson and Nadia Douglas. Greeley Philo in the three spot. Number in the four spot is Teresa Petro. Number five, Bella Mead. In the fifth spot's Bella Mead. <laughs> Bree Beckett then hits sixth in seventh. The seventh position is McKenna Burke. Batting eighth is Lizzie Pomeski. And <laughs> nine is Octavia Daisy. Starting out in right field as the flex is Logan Maley. I don't know how that tripped me up so bad. It, it, it's so, you so deserve that. That's, that's all I'm saying. That, that's called karma. It's apparently just all my fault. <laughs> As both teams getting introduced, it will be uh, Sandy Valley taking the field first as the home team. We do know with this uh, early season matchup, you get a pretty good understanding, you know, as you're getting your starting lineup. You're already a few games in. You're really starting to understand where everybody's going to slot in well in the lineup. You're learning where everybody is going to be the uh, strongest for your team in the certain position that they are. But you also, these are the chances that you're going to take there to potentially figure out who's going to be the best coming in off the bench potentially for uh, any uh, situational hitting or maybe late game substitutions. Yeah, again, it, it, it takes an entire team to put a season together, and you're going to have those injuries. You're going to have those those times where, you know, girls aren't just playing as well as they, they can be, or, you know, there, there could be some situations with illness. And, again, it, it takes a, a whole team to put this together. So the the other side you got to forget, you know, this, this is going to be a heck of an IVC – you know, season this year. So these games are important, you know, for the, the championship at the end of the season as well. So to your point, you're trying to mesh this team together, see who plays well together, you know, trying to get your lineup honed. And again, it's early in the year, but at the same time, you know, we, we still got to be thinking the, the ultimate thing is trying to get that conference championship right now. Absolutely. And today's umpires will be out in the field, Joe Stevens, and behind the plate will be Clark Froelich, as those is, that is your crew for tonight. <laughs> As they get set to go, Sandy Valley with uh, always like when everybody's got the uh, their own take on how to come out from uh, on the field. So the only thing about <laughs> the poor umpire just cleaned off the plate, well, and then know. you had six girls step on the plate. Well, you know, no, that's nah, that's it's, it's, it's what it is. It's all right. It just gives him something else to do again. There right? you go. There you go. He's probably wants to do, stay warm, too. <laughs> Starting on the bump for Sandy Valley, it is Bella Mead. She will be throwing back there to Teresa Petro behind the plate. And, you know, for this Cardinals team stump, they are definitely going to want Mead to get rolling early and try to limit this Newcomerstown offense that we know 
uh, from last season had some real good offensive showings, but overall, if you heard from Coach Lee Fish in the pregames, you know they depend a little bit more on their pitching. They're less uh, more of an offensive-minded team. So this has the potential for the makings of a little bit more of a defensive game. Well, it seems a lot of the times we, we see the importance of those first runs going across for either team and how important that is just on the mental or the, the psyche side of it. So, you know, if you're a coach, you want to get on those pitchers, you know, kind of getting them doubting their stuff. Do they have all the, the good stuff today? Uh, you know, the weather being a little bit colder, you know, are, are the pitchers going to be able to drop balls and uh, change speeds really well? And, uh, again, it just becomes becomes a chess match right from the start. Certainly does. So leading things off for Newcomerstown, it will be Maddie Kellish as we wrap up your Wood Electric pregame show. Don't forget, get subscribed to our YouTube channel today. Get notified for all of our spring season action. Kellish, the shortstop for the Trojans. She'll stand in in the right-handed batter's box. Me, the righty, she gets ready. And it is time to play ball from Sandyville. Tonight's first pitch brought to you by Buckeye Career Center. As Meade Rock steals, Kellish goes after the first one. She sees hot shot to the right fielder, and she can't quite hang on to it as bouncing off of her glove out there in right was Logan Maley. Kind of got caught in between, Stump. Uh, it, it did not get very far off the ground. She rocketed that thing out there. You got a little bit of the curve, you know, with that natural spin to the right, and uh, th those are hard to judge. And, again, she did a great job of knocking it down, just uh, holding her to a single. Larissa Stull, the third baseman for the Trojans, will now stand in. Her first offering is going to be off the plate for a ball. We're going to keep that uh, window shut there. I don't know if anybody heard that on stream. I opened up the window in front of me, and uh, we found where the uh, crosswind's blowing in from left field. Who needs the game sound anyway? Uh. <laughs> Next delivery from Meade. Swung on, belted to the right side, but it is a high pop-up. Maley under it, and she'll make that grab for out number one. Good recovery from her after the first error. Stall getting well under it. And you saw how far she even had to come in in right field. So that wind doing some crazy things. Yeah, we've, we've, all the games we've uh, done this year, you've seen some great tailing. We've seen a lot of great shots just get die in that outfield. But she did a great job battling that sun and uh, sticking right with it. Now standing in, it will be Alyssa Barker, the second baseman for the Trojans. Meade's first delivery to hers outside. Ball one, probably a tad high. Runner on first in Kellish, who reached on that opening error. Meade looking to strand a runner early. Meade rocks, steals, and she is going to miss the zone again for a ball. Looks right now, Bella Mead kind of a little high in the zone right now. We'll see if Newcomers Town kind of waits on her to kind of throw that first strike during the game. Mead delivers. That time we'll catch the zone. It's now 2 1. <laughs> we uh, waited for confirmation. I said our, our, our <laughs> official's not the quickest uh, caller uh, strikes, but. Well, you want me to just call it what I think it is? Yeah. Can just right. go from there. That won't mess anybody up, that's for sure. We can tell if it's over the plate or not. Just can't tell its height. In the dirt, past Petro, and it goes to the backstop. Advancing will be Kellish on that wild pitch. And now she's going to advance to third as the throw from Petro to Meade skips under her glove. And all of a sudden, the runner is just one base away. Again, great, uh, great uh, aggressive base running there by Maddie Kellish. Um, you know, saw the pitcher drop it there and. Off to third she goes. Very aggressive, great base run. So Barker stands back in. She's up on a good hitter's count. 3-1, one, one gone in the top of the first. Meade delivers. That is going to be on the inside corner for a strike. So I didn't need confirmation that time, Stump. I just went with it. <laughs> so a full count coming up to Barker. Meade kind of breathing on her right hand, still trying to get some feeling in it. When the wind <laughs> dies down, boy, I sound like I'm from the Midwest for sure. When the wind <laughs> dies down, it feels nice here. Meads delivery. Swung on, put into play. High fly ball. Maley comes in. She'll grab it. And Kellish thought about going for it at home. Instead, she goes back. Probably a good decision as Maley threw a laser beam into Petro. Yeah, great uh, action there. And Maddie Kellish sitting on third there. Uh, didn't give it much thought, rightfully so. Cam Dorland, the first baseman, will stand in. Again, that ball looked like it was going to be a little bit deeper and right, but just seemed to get pushed back. So Meade has a chance to work out of a 
little bit of an early jam. First delivery, and Dorlin wanted it. Instead, she holds the hands back for ball number one. And like we talked earlier, how important are these early runs in there? You, you got a runner on third with a run out, one out. Now, uh, again, you get a pop fly to right field to get the second out, and it becomes an important run right now. Meads 1-0. Dorland swings and misses, and she was out in front of that outside heater. Tried to pull it down the left side. Dorland stands back in for the 1-1. Call coming in from the Cardinals' dugout. Yeah, a lot of room right behind the pitcher there. They got the second uh, pushed over towards first pretty good, and the shortstop pushed over towards third, so... Playing the corners hard, and there's going to be off the end of the bat for Dorland. She's going to hustle down to first and is not going to be able to make it as a good glove over there from third and on to first from Douglas. That will do it for the top of the first inning. No hits, one left on base, and one error in that top of the first inning. When we come back, Cardinals are at the plate with Big Z Sports. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. At Kaufman Realty and Auctions, you've got options. Your property is unique, and our agents know how to sell it. Whether it's a traditional listing or live auction, we'll earn you top dollar. Our agents will utilize whichever method of sale works best. When buying or selling your next home, call on Kaufman. Bottom of the first inning from Sandyville, it is the Sandy Valley Cardinals coming up to the plate. Good first inning of work for Meade on the mound for them as she did have the first base runner reach on the error out there in right field, but she ended up stranding her at third. And outside of that, two flyouts to the right side and the ground out to the uh, ground out to third base. So that's exactly how they wanted her to start that game for sure. Leading things off for the Cardinals in this inning, it will be Nicholson, Douglas, and Philo. They will all be coming to the plate. I tell you, you got to give Bella Mead some credit right there. A freshman, you know, and again, you got, you know, someone that got on base uh, right away, you know, had to deal through the rest of the inning, kind of stayed focused, did her thing, and uh, was able to get out of the inning with no harm. On the bump for Newcomers Town, a player that we saw plenty of times last season uh, during their softball season, Kaylee Watson, now the sophomore, started as a freshman last year, had some really good games for a freshman and they're going to turn back to her again on the circle. And from what I recall last year, Stump, you know, very much a location pitcher, good movement, not necessarily a flamethrower, but she can bring it when the uh, situation calls for it. And it's amazing what just a year can do, you know. It seems like, you know, we've done, a, you know, a few of these games already this year, and we have a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing key positions this year. This game's a prime example. we got a freshman versus sophomore this year, and they both can bring it. Nicholson, a lefty, the shortstop starting for the Sandy Valley Cardinals will stand in as we get the home side of the first inning started. Watson too far inside. Nicholson actually looked down to her coach and kind of patted at her jersey. I almost went, I almost think she was trying to say, hey, it nicked me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Blue says no. <laughs> what is it from the bench warmers or something? But I ticked it. I ticked it. <laughs> Watson ready to go again. Her next delivery. Swung on, slapped down the left side, but it's going to hook foul right over Coach Geiger's head. Watson ready again as she'll tow the rubber. She'll rock and fire. Another slap down the left side. Going to hook foul again. Nicholson falls behind one and two. Coach Geiger giving some instructions. Try to straighten that out a little bit between the lines. 
between the lines and between that 5-6 hole over there. You see the shortstop shaded over in Kellish. Should actually go back to more of a straight-up position now. There's going to be a grounder up the middle to Kellish. On to first, not in time, and great hustle as Nicholson beats it out by a couple steps. Peyton's got some wheels, doesn't she? <laughs> Certainly does. <laughs> so an early base runner for the Cardinals. Nadia Douglas stands in. Again, great adjustment by Peyton there, slapping it right to shortstop. Uh, again, nice play, charged it, just uh, too quick to get down there to first. Douglas, another lefty. She'll slap it towards the second baseman, into the glove, on to first, and there's the out. Now there goes the runner in Nicholson, and she is going to be out at third as she rounded and got caught in no man's land and a great throw across the diamond to get Naylor. Yeah, nice play there at uh, second base by Alyssa Barker. Great play there, and then heads up uh, from uh, Cam Dorland, the first baseman, to get him at third. So it is Douglas who grounds out. And then Nicholson is out on the advance, so it'll be Breeley Philo to stand in. That was a heck of a play for Alyssa Barker from second to handle it, flip it on to first, and a nice throw by Dorland. It's a nice four. That out. You don't see too many four, three, fives. No. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you don't. <laughs> Philo. <laughs> Philo sees the first one in there for a strike. Next delivery from Watson's fouled off the right side. Got to say, first time being here for a uh, softball game for Sandy Valley. Absolutely gorgeous field and facility they have. Yeah, they they've done a great job getting ready uh, for today's game, and yeah, this this field is is absolutely gorgeous. Philo behind, 0-2. Two. two gone, bottom of the first. Watson's ready. Her next delivery is a changeup, and it is going to be popped up center field and coming in and making the catch. No problem out there in center is Morris. So one hit, no errors, nobody left on as we move on to the second inning. Newcomers Town coming up to the plate. IVC Softball returns after this. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Today's presentation of high school softball brought to you by the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency. No scores. We head on to the away part of the second inning. Meade's first offering, offering is a ball to Breeley Little, the catcher. Meade starts off this inning operating high in the zone. She brought it back down as the inning went on in that first as Little fouls it off to the right side. Did we move the car from away from there? Yeah, you know what? Okay, the, good. Yeah, Adam saved the day today. <laughs> had, had to give the VIP treatment to you again, you know, hobble you up the <laughs> stairs again. Here we go. Oh, I can't wait to get this boot off. Yeah. Either can we. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself on what I want to say there as the next offering for me is outside and low. Uh, Commentate the game, Stump. It's 2-1 <laughs> to Little. I uh, couldn't help it. <laughs> Medium depth out there in the outfield. Center actually kind of crashed pretty far in. We'll see if Little can do anything with that as the next offering was a called strike two. You know, we're talking between innings, you know, again, how nice this field is. You look over the left field uh, fence, and there's a whole baseball game going over there, and that field looks gorgeous too. So. Yeah, the right fielder out there might have to wait for headache to be called yeah. out for him if somebody gets a hold of one from here. 
But, uh, again, Sandy Valley, uh, blessed to have some really nice facilities. First punch out of the game for Meade as she gets Little swinging on the outside part of the zone for out number one. Pitcher versus pitcher now as Kaylee Watson will stand in for her first at bat. Good confidence builder for Meade to start off the second inning. Yeah, she uh, she seems in control right now. And, again, just a freshman and, and going up against a very experienced lineup can be difficult, but she's uh, she's taking them down one at a time. Watson goes after the first one she sees, puts a pretty good ride into it to center, but making the catch out there in center is Philo for a quick out number two. Philo had to take a step or two back. Watson showing off a little power in her first at bat. Yeah, a little, little uh, misconceived, and you think that wind's going to push it in. And that one kept going. She, she she had put a nice little punch behind that one, and uh, she did a great job reacting out there in center field and getting the second out. Brandy Morris, the center fielder, stands back in, or should say stands in for the first time, <laughs> rather. Meade's first delivery inside part of the zone in the dirt, ball one. You know, we've kind of seen this, especially early in the season, you know, kind of the, the nerves or the, the pitchers kind of have to get warmed up in the inning, too. And once they get going, you know, base runners become a premium. Popped up left side. Will it be playable? No, as it goes inside the Newcomerstown dugout. Count goes even at one and one. Be honest, that was kind of deceiving because she hit it almost straight up, and I didn't know where the ball was going to go. <laughs> She see Morris, actually, she goes back to the batter's box, shaking her hand, going, ah, that didn't feel good. Still a little cold. Early season baseball and softball and such, uh, you got to wait till the temperatures bump up about 10 or 15 degrees before those start stop hurting as much. Yeah, we had a, a couple games uh, canceled here at the beginning of the season. Uh, looks like got a few in, and uh, the, this weekend's game and next week's not looking really good. Morris pops it up straight up the middle and tiptoeing That's over it. second base <laughs> is the shortstop in Nicholson for out number three. Out of the bottom of the second, still no score from Sandy Valley. Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications are back after this. Finding your perfect vehicle can be frustrating. The selection process, working out a deal, the pushy salespeople. Well, Sarsha and Ford of Waynesburg takes away all of those frustrations by offering transparent pricing, a large new and pre-owned inventory, and salespeople that you'll consider a friend by the time your sale is complete. Sarsha and Ford of Waynesburg is proud to have won the Ford President's Award three consecutive years based solely on that customer satisfaction. And you can see the difference at 300 West Lisbon Street in Waynesburg or at sarshanofwaynesburg.com, where community and customers always come first. When you're traveling to the game, there's a great way to see your directional map on a new radio from Cartoons in New Philly. Just plug in your phone and all your maps and apps and Bluetooth devices are right on your radio. Cartoons carries a wide selection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto radios from all of the name brands. From 7-inch screen radios to 10-inch screen radios, Cartoons has you covered. Stop in and see them on display and let Cartoons give you a demonstration. Cartoons, 517 West High Avenue in New Philly. Be there. It will be the Cardinals at the plate. Four, five, and six due up. Teresa Petro, Bellamede, and Bree Beckett. Bottom of the second, no score. Beautiful day from Sandy Valley. Watson goes to work, and her first offering is past Petro for strike one. Petro a touch out in front of that first offering. We know Watson has that off speed. She's already pulled it out once, and it was Philo who got into it, but if you can time up that off speed and really put a good bat on it, it will go a long ways, but you got to be ready for it as Petro sees strike two. Well, you talked a little bit earlier, Nick. Again, it's not necessarily her speed. It's her placement, and she's doing really well. And you kind of want to put that pressure on the umpire, play right around the edge of that zone and make the umpire uh, make his calls and kind of adjust accordingly. She's done a great job. Next offering from Watson. Petro gets a bat into it, kind of off the end of the bat, and moving over to her left, making the play is Barker for out number one. Yeah, and there was a great example. You just said it, you know, just off the plate, and she really had to reach out there for a weak pop-up, and great uh, placement there by, uh, by the pitcher. Meade stands in for her first at bat. Also for Watson in this game, you know, Three pitches to get one out. I think she likes that, uh, that <laughs> equation. Meade fouls the first one away. 
between her legs. Been a lot of foul balls uh, with Sandy Valley, too, again, which says a lot about that placement and how much movement it's getting right now. So they're making some contact, uh, just nothing except that one hit out in the uh, center field. Just not a lot of strong contact between the lines right now. Next delivery to Meade. She'll go after it, and it's past stall and almost into the glove of the shortstop but couldn't quite corral it. Over there was Kellis. She was not going to be able to make that throw across the diamond regardless, so it's an infield single for Meade to get things rolling. We saw Stahl in the pregame warm-ups from over there in third. She snagged more than a few of them. That's just a little bit too far away from her outstretched glove. Yeah, you, you couldn't place that any better if you're Bella Mead, right between third and short, and uh, both of them uh, stretched uh, out to try to get it and just out of reach. Beckett stands in, grounder up the middle, Watson gloves, goes to second, and there was almost a miscommunication <laughs> between short and second in Barker and Kellish. It was Kellish who jumped in front of it and did get the lead runner out in Mead. An interesting put out there, but they do get the lead runner. Uh, yeah, Maddie Kellish again uh, was going over there, then kind of did the old stop and then tagged her and <laughs> tried to throw it to first. So, again, did get the double play, but the important thing is you get that lead runner and one out. So the fielder's choice will see Beckett standing at first. First offering to the next batter in to uh, McKenna Burke. She'll foul it over her team's dugout. Well, he made the comment of the 4-3-5 double play. There was a 1-6, almost 3, that we thought was going to be a 1-4-3. <laughs> so we're all over the place early. Uh. Watson ready. Her next offering swung on and missed. There's a snap throw down, and it's airmailed by the catcher in Little. Beckett's going to try to step up to second. Here's the throw. What a throw in from right. And just around the tag was Beckett. A good slide from her where she chose the right side of the bag to go to. It was a close play, though. I, if it wasn't for that good slide on the left side of that bag, reaching right around the tag, uh, she would have been out. That's a great throw by Kaylee Watt, or I'm sorry, by Riley Johnson out there. Great backup uh, with the overthrow to first and just a little late. Burks behind 0-2 in the count. Watson with the runner on second will wind and fire. She tried to go off, seat, off speed too high. Again, good pitch by Watson right there. Uh, way off the plate. Again, you got two strikes. Seeing she'll chase it. And great discipline uh, by uh, McKenna Burke there. Watson's next delivery. Burke fouls it away to the right side. Is that what you call a defensive swing right there? To it, it certainly is. <laughs> live to play another pitch. That was a, a nice job by her. Coach Geiger giving a, some instructions. Next delivery from Watson. Outside corner and gets Burke to bite. Strike three, first punch out for Watson. And the danger is avoided there with Beckett standing on second base. We'll go to the third inning. No score between the Trojans and Cardinals. We're back after this. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400. Thad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events in their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. Today's presentation of high school softball brought to you by the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency. Aaron Stump hydrating between uh, breaks. Hopefully we didn't catch that on the way back. As the first batter in for Newcomerstown, this part of the inning is Riley Johnson who fouls one back over our heads. Meade back on the mound. Yeah, it's hard work sitting up in this nice warm press box <laughs> and uh, 
I think Chris Kale would like one of these. Yeah, games. Chris. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you're complaining about. All I heard you complaining a lot last night how cold it was behind the the <laughs> fence. I mean, it's not bad at all today here. <laughs> Meets next delivery. Johnson gets a bat on it, fouls it off the cage in front of the Sandy Valley dugout. She falls behind 0-2. Mead going right at her. Again, both pitchers doing a great job and not letting base runners bother them at all. And, again, kind of refocusing and kind of bear down, getting some uh, good quality outs here. Meade ready again. Her 0-2 swung on and missed. Johnson is set down on three pitches. Second punch out for Meade. It is Michaela McConnell who will now stand in. McConnell out there and left hasn't had any uh, balls in play towards her. And I don't know if she's going to because that wind is still coming in <laughs> strong from left. Meade's first offering swung on. That one down the left field line. It's tailing, and it's going to go foul. <laughs> and McConnell sure hit it a long way. As soon as we say, ah, it's not going to go too far in the left field line, she takes one and drills it down the left field I mean, line. I mean, she hit that, what, 15 feet from, it's, the, it's, from the outer <laughs> fence? That's pretty impressive. Straight into that wind. That was. She heard me up here and said, yeah, oh, I'll show you. <laughs> Mead gets the call. She'll kick and deal in the dirt. Ball one to McConnell, good eye. Tried for that inside corner again. Again, if you're Bella Mead, think of that, just one long strike, no big deal. Refocus. Sometimes easier said than done. Uh, Mead's ready again, her one, one, too far inside, and it's going to catch the shin of McConnell, so she will trot on down to first from the hit-by-pitch. You want your Bob Euchre impression or your Harry Doyle, whichever one you want? <laughs> Just a bit inside, not outside. <laughs> so McConnell's the one-out base runner. It will be Kellish back to the top of the order for Newcomers Town. She reached on an error on the very first pitch of the game. You remember she laced that one down the right field line off the glove of Maley. Kellish hoping to find a gap. Meade's first offering, too far outside, probably a little bit high as well. Speaking of finding the gap, though, Stump, uh, right center, pretty wide open. Not saying it will happen, but who knows? Maybe yeah, I'm guessing yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> She's got enough power to put it through there. Meade in the dirt, or pardon me, on the outside corner. I thought it was low, but it was dug out by Petro. It's 1-1. See, I went too early, I guess. <laughs> I will say that where we sit on the press box, we're basically over home plate, so it's kind of hard to get the high and low depth. Yeah, we talked about how base runners right now become a premium, too. And, uh, again, one out, one on first. And, uh, like I said, last up, Maddie Kelly, she, uh, she really drilled one out there. You hopefully get one right through the gap here. Almost a brush back pitch, pitch to Kellish as it was high and tight. Meade slips behind 2-1. Next delivery inside, high, tight again. Kellish, good hitter's count of 3-1. Looking to do some damage. Try to get McConnell to advance a couple bases. All right, Coach McWilliams. You swinging away or you're going to make her throw a strike? 3-1, got to be perfect. And if it's not and you put it in play and you get yourself out, you're going to get a talking to when you come back to the <laughs> dugout. Delivery. Swung on and missed. Kellish went after it. Count runs full. That one was a good hitter's pitch there from Meade as it was pretty much down the heart of the plate. Kellish may be trying to do just a bit too much with that swing. Yeah, big pitch here again. Payoff pitch. You got a girl on first. Meade, she's ready. 
Her delivery. Kellish fights it off and stays alive at a full count. Uh, we we would have had that right here. I mean, right here we would have had that. If it wasn't know. for the fence, the window, and the press box. I don't know how much faith I have in you being able to bear hand. <laughs> oh, <the catch>. man. <laughs> oh, ye of such little faith. <laughs> I just know you'd been icing your hand when you went home after that. <laughs> You never, you never show them that it hurts. Never show them. No, of course not. No, never. <laughs> you wait till you get back in the car, then start crying. <laughs> Meads delivery swung on, put into play to short. Nicholson goes on to second, and the throw goes high. It's picked up by the right fielder in Maley. Now advancing and going to be tagged out as McConnell. She tries to get around the tag, delivers on to second as a heads-up base running move there by Kellish, who advance all the way to second on that throwing error. But still the lead runner is gone for Newcomerstown. Sandy Valley does have two outs in this inning. Yeah, that's a uh, that's an unfortunate uh, base running mistake right there. He made the assumption it was going to right field. He had plenty of time, but a great throw there uh, by the right fielder, Logan Maley, and uh, plenty of time to get the second out there in the inning. Stahl stands back in. Her first time up, she flew out to right. She does have the runner in scoring position in Kellish. Yeah, it was a good hard hit by Maddie Kellish. Uh, and again, great play there at shortstop. Stahl cranks it right center, trailing back. Center fielder over the head of Philo. It's off the fence, and we've got our game's first, or the game's first run as coming around to score is Kellish on the RBI double for Stahl. I almost said the run's first game. I don't think that would have been right. <laughs> <laughs> so Stahl. Great contact to right center. Philo was tracking it all the way. She got on her horse but just couldn't catch up to it. Yeah, Brearley had a great jump on it, but that wind almost kind of forced it, you know, to curve away from her a little bit. And she, uh, she had some great range out there, just unfortunately out of her range and scoring our first run of the game. Barker stands in, fouls it off. That one was coming straight for you, Stump. We didn't even twitch, did we? We <laughs> didn't even twitch. Yeah, it's the three layers of protection in yes. front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Might have ducked my chin a little bit, make it hit the head, but. Barker, her first time up. She flew out to the right side. Mead rocks, fires, swung on, right side, and under the glove of the second baseman, and coming around to score is going to be Stahl, as standing safely at first will be Barker with an RBI. Heads up base running for Stahl, who kept right on rolling. And it is Newcomerstown who takes the 2 to nothing lead. Again, those are the unfortunate errors that, that really cost him. McKenna Burke, again, doing a good job getting right in front of it. Just came up a little bit on it. And uh, instead of getting out of the uh, inning a little bit, uh, scores another run for Newcomerstown. Of course, all of our replays this season brought to you by Wayne Dorr from the Claxon Communications crew. As standing in will be Dorland. She ground out to third. Her only other at bat in this game. Meade delivers too far outside. These are the momentum building moments, you know, for either one of these teams. And once you start rolling a little bit, you do not want to let your foot off the gas. Try to get as many runs as you possibly can. Yeah, that's kind of the chess game of softball right now. To your point, you want to keep it rolling. If you're Newcomers Town, if you're Sandy Valley, I think, okay, that's enough. Let's get the next out, get out of the inning here. Dorland with a line shot over Nicholson's head, and the inning stays alive, two on for Newcomers Town as they pick up their third hit of the inning. Again, great piece of hitting there. Hard shot right to center field. Breely Philo, she's, she's done a lot of work here this afternoon. Uh, she's got a lot of speed, did a nice job of charging that, getting it right away, getting it right back in the infield, making sure everything stays uh, in front of you on first and second base. Breely Little, the catcher for Newcomerstown, stands in. She struck out her first time up. First offering is going to be in the dirt. Petro does keep it in front of her, though. Again, nice stop there by the catcher. Keeps him on first and second. Still only got one girl in scoring position versus uh, two if that one gets by you. Two gone, top of the third. Newcomerstown now sits on the two to nothing lead. Meade trying to work out of a jam as Little sees the next pitch. That one's going to find the zone. It's a 1-1 one -one count. 
You still got to wait a little bit, don't you? <laughs> Get that pitch. It's like, hey, strike. <laughs> I was going to make a guess, but. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> like I said, we can tell left and right are over the plate. Uh, the, the, the up and down's a little difficult Depth. from up here. Depth is an issue. Yeah. Meads delivery. She goes off speed, and it's too far outside and high. A little ahead, 2-1. I'm also, from the catching background, going to be more biased on the catcher. So, no, <laughs> framed perfectly. It's everything's a strike. Uh, you'd be that catcher with the pass ball. You'd still frame your glove, wouldn't you? Depending on how far away from me it was. Yeah, I don't want to chase after that. If it was the pitcher's fault that they threw it too far away. Next pitch, high and outside. Little's ahead, 3-1. Another good hitter's count. Yeah, I'll just try to frame the pitch, and I'll stare back at the pitcher and say, no, you go get it. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's three runners going circling the bases. Meads <laughs> uh. ready. Her 3-1. Little swings and misses. Actually, I think she caught a piece of it and fouled it back into Petro's glove. It's a full count. we got a payoff pitch upcoming. Again, only in the third inning. This is a, a big pitch right here. Big out for Sandy Valley. Big opportunity for Newcomers Town. And here we go. The 3-2. Check swing, and she went. Little is sat down to end the inning, but some of the damage is done. Newcomers Town takes the 2 to nothing lead off of an RBI double from Larissa Stahl and an RBI double from Alyssa Barker. We will move on to the bottom of the third inning. Trojans lead the Cardinals 2 to nothing. We're back after this. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. The past 30 years, the residents in and around the Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff of McInturf Realty for buying and selling their residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of those communities, there is nothing better than high school sports. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McInturf Realty, 330-364-SOLD. Or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Bottom of the third inning in Newcomerstown opens up a 2 to nothing lead thanks to a pair of RBI doubles by way of the Trojans in both Larissa Stahl and Alyssa, Alyssa Barker. That's what you want to need, uh, take advantage of if you are Newcomerstown stump. You just Any of those moments that the, any room Sandy Valley is going to give you, you got to take advantage. Well, that's what makes Newcomerstown so dangerous. They do take advantage of every opportunity right there. Again, you had some bobbles there. You had some airs there. And, and again, just that little bit of crack, and it's amazing how fast it opens. But Sandy Valley, again, doing a good job of regrouping right there, getting a couple outs, uh, two – or their um, – I should say uh, Bella Mead uh, with uh, her third strike out there. The two of that inning uh, gets him out. And that was actually a foul ball called as Lizzie Pomeski stood in. Pitch was inside. She kind of kept her hands in there. Blue saw it off of the, uh, the nub of the bat, so she'll stand back in with an 0-1 count. Next pitch, next offering from Watson is going to be up for a ball. <laughs> Saw Pomeski, she looked back at the umpire after that foul ball and just kind of went, ah, it's, it's the last thing you think of is getting that nub out of the way. Next offering from Watson is going to paint the outside corner. It's 1-2. Again, like we said several times already, Kaylee's got a great job of just framing that plate. There's been nothing right down the pipe there. and Again, batter's been having a little difficulties adjusting. Pomeski puts it in between the 5-6 hole. Delivered across the diamond is Kellish. It was a low throw, but it is dug out by Dorland at first for out number one. Again, Gam Dorland, a great dig out there. Kind of battling the sun right there, coming from the left side of the field right into her. But again, did a great job blocking it, holding on, and securing the first out. So it's Octavia Daisy, the left fielder, who will stand in. Cardinals. 
Watson's ready in her first delivery to Daisy's too far outside, ball one. I didn't ask for confirmation on that one, Stump. We went with it. <laughs> that one was a bit outside. <laughs> Watson's next delivery too far inside this time. Little scoops it out of the dirt. It's a 2-0 count. Said I'm not sure what happened over at the boys field, but there is a lot of dust that just blew up near uh, first. I don't know, if just chasing yeah, the, the uh, batter back. A pickoff and a throw back in, and that's the reason why, because the runner just advanced and stole second. Why are we calling that? Anyway, because <laughs> the next offering from Watson swung on and missed by Daisy the heck are you doing stump wrong game it's like the shiny penny thing <laughs> <laughs> all right watson ready again the 2-1 daisy fouls it back off the cage counts even now at two and two watson working that inside outside up down game again really well as you've already mentioned Credit where credit's due for Sandy Valley. They've had more than a few balls put into play, though. I mean, they are making contact. They just have not found much of the uh, green grass yet. Do have two hits so far through this first time through the order. Daisy fouls it off and stays alive again. That's a prime example right there, Nick. Uh, again, just able to follow it off, live to play another pitch, but getting right off the uh, the knuckles, right? Not off her knuckles, but very close to the almost, hands. Almost that the handle, off. yeah. yeah. Which... That's going to sting. <laughs> Watson ready. Her delivery, Daisy swings and misses. It was dropped by Little, but she'll paint a perfect throw on down to first. It is the second punch out of the game for Watson. Go back to the top of the order. Nicholson stands back in. She started this game off with a single, infield single. Came all the way around to... Try to advance to third on a ground ball that was over to the right side, but she ended up getting thrown out on that 4-3-5 double play. Delivery from Watson. There's going to be a beautiful bunt laid down by Nicholson. There's going to be no throw from Stahl as she was not going to have a chance. It's another single for Nicholson. You cannot place that ball any better. No, she's done a great job. She's got some great speed, and uh, Newcomer's Town's going to have to to bring in that infield next time she's up because <laughs> they haven't did, been close Stoll either did time. did start in. To be fair, yeah. she did start in and still didn't have a throw. They uh, they didn't come close either time getting her. Douglas is back in. She'll watch the first one go right down the heart of the plate, strike one. Big lead from Nicholson. Just asking for that throw down from Little. <laughs> <laughs> Watson ready. She gets the grip and throws it. That one, left side, trailing away from the field of play, and it will go off the fence. Douglas falls behind 0-2. Boy, off the bat, that looked like it was going straight down the left field line, and it almost ended up outside of the playing area. A little, little slap uh, hit there, and like you said, it's like, ooh, going to be close, and like it's not yeah, even close to there. <laughs> Douglas back in, 0-2 count. Nicholson on at first. But what a nice luxury to have that speed on first right now. Put into play, right center, trailing, losing some steam, but coming in and making the catch out there is Johnson for out number three. Newcomerstown still leads two to nothing. They're coming up to the plate to start off the fourth inning after this. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. 
See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Starting off the fourth inning, it will be 6-7-8 due up for newcomers. Town Watson, she'll stand in for her next plate appearance. She flew out to center her first time up. You remember she put a pretty good charge on her first at bat. Put a really good charge in it. Uh, but again, the uh, center fielder for Sandy Valley, Breeley Philo, she's uh, she covers a lot of field out there, and that was a prime example. Meade catches the outside corner in a perfect pitch to start off the at bat. Meade ready again. She'll kick deal. Watson holds the bat back on her shoulders as it was in the dirt, ball one. Must have been bring your puppy to the park day. I've seen at least two dogs, <laughs> actually three dogs, I think, running around out here. Nobody loves a good baseball or softball game like a little puppy. <laughs> Gives everyone a lot of entertainment, especially when they act up a little bit. Meade goes to the inside corner and paints it perfectly. She's ahead 1-2. That was another great location. Yeah, the puppies love it, too, if they get to be the ones who chase the foul balls. <laughs> of course, it's hard to throw a softball after it's got teeth marks in it. <laughs> Meade ready. Her 1-2. Watson holds the bat back, doesn't offer. It's ball two. Again, Bellamy doing a good job. You're ahead of the count. Don't give him anything good to hit. Put it just off the plate, and uh, good discipline by uh, Kelly Watson there not to swing. Really busting in on the hands so far in this first at bat of the fourth. We'll see if she now tries to change up and go on the outside. Meade's next offering. Sure enough, there it was, swing and a miss as Watson is sat down for out number one. I believe that's Bella Mead's fourth strikeout for the game. Third, I lied to you. Third strikeout. You had it right. The Did first I have it right? It, One, is, it is fourth. Two, three. Well, there is a fourth. <laughs> never doubt myself. Never <laughs> doubt myself, and I doubted myself. Brandy Morris stands in. She popped up to short. As Peyton Nicholson made the catch the last time she was up and tiptoed second base, Nicholson's not going to have to move much for this one this time <laughs> as she'll make out number two. Said shifted a little to the left, a little to the right, <laughs> right there in the middle. S Boom. Settled back in where she started from for the Absolutely. most part. Absolutely. It is Riley Johnson back in. She struck out last inning. Meade operating for a very quick fourth inning here if she can keep this pace rolling. Her first offering. Johnson gets a good bat into it. Little bloop job to center. Coming in hard as the right fielder can't make the play is Maley as that one dropped just perfectly where the right fielder and center fielder couldn't get to it. So Johnson has a single. The C and I dog lands right in the <laughs> middle of the island. Uh Again, it's one of those where if you're one of four Sandy Valley players, you're like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And if you're the batter, go, 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 go. So, <laughs> Both Maley and Philo were converging, and neither really was had it enough juice to quite get there. Maley was the closest, just missed it by a couple of inches. And if you're Bill and Mead, you just kind of roll your eyes and like, whatever. <laughs> it goes in the log as a single. <laughs> That's all I care about. McConnell back up the middle. Mead loves it, takes her time, delivers on to first. For out number three. Quick inning of work there for Meade. Her team still trails two to nothing. Cardinals coming up to the plate after this. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best.
Fishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Fishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events and their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. Back to Sandy Valley High School softball out of the IVC. Trojans still up 2 nothing on the Cardinals. It'll be 3-4-5 due up in the home half of the fourth. Philo, Petro, and Meade. First pitch. Two Philos in the dirt, ball one. The umpire's hammer didn't come out, did it? We were waiting, waiting. Uh, no ball. Well, and the no thing ball. is, the people who are watching at home saw that where it fell in the zone. We can't tell high or low because of how high up we are. Next offering from Watson inside corner. That's going to paint it. Strike one to Philo. I didn't need confirmation that time. Did you see the... the what? That must had no spin on it from Watson that time. That was, that was a little was interesting. There. Almost looked like it. Watson's next delivery on the 1-1, swung on and missed by Philo. Watson goes to the outside part of the zone, had her behind. It's a 1-2 count. Can you imagine a knuckler on a day like this with the wind blowing? Where's Ooh. that ball going to end up? <laughs> <laughs> the 1-2. Watson goes off speed. <laughs> it's now 2-2. Two and two. It was too high. Philo, her first and only time up. She flew out to center. She stands back in. Next offering from Watson, too far outside. Full count upcoming. Tell you, Kaylee doing a nice job to this point. Again, you got to, you know, let them hit the ball. Trust your uh, infield and your outfielder. You got uh, some great fielding behind you. Watson delivers, swung on and missed. It's a punch out for Watson for out number one. Or do it yourself and uh, uh, strike yeah. him out. She says, guys, I, I know you're behind me. I know uh, I got a good defense behind me. That's all right. I got this one. <laughs> Third strike out of the game for Watson. Petro stands back in. She popped up to the second baseman her first time up. First delivery to her, swung on and missed. Just like in real estate, Stump. Location, location, <laughs> location. <laughs> Watson kicks, deals, swung on, fouled back off the cage. It was coming for you again. Have you noticed that all the ones that are fouled straight back are going straight for you every time? You know, we did the uh, what Carrollton game, uh, what was that, Monday? And, uh, yeah, if it wasn't for that fence and press box, uh, we'd have gotten <laughs> drilled up there a lot, too. Well, I'm thankful. Like, like we said when we came up here, it's double pane glass in front of us. I think we'll be all right. Watson off speed. Petro waits on it, pops it up right side, and coming in and making a running right catch is Johnson as she falls down to her meet knees and makes the out. Yeah, great hustle there by Riley Johnson. Uh, a tough play, running in, looking up in that uh, the sunny skies right now, and great play. Almost had the ice cream cone. It looked like it was going <laughs> to pop out on the end of the glove. Mead, she'll come back in. She had a single her first time up, looking to keep the inning alive. Again, if you're Sandy Valley or Coach Geiger right now, you're, you're excited to see how your freshman's playing already this year. Mead goes after the first pitch she sees, pops it up in the infield and making the catch over there at second. No problem is Barker. It is a 1-2-3 inning in the fourth for the Cardinals. Trojans coming back to the plate. They lead 2 to nothing. Don't go anywhere. Big Z Sports is back with this Tuscarawas Insurance Agency presentation after this. Hey, homeowners, are you ready to give your home a spring makeover? The Wayne Door Annual Spring Sale is happening April 1st through the 6th. Get ready to save big on garage doors, entry doors, windows, and more. It's the perfect time to enhance your curb appeal and security without breaking the bank. Visit our Dover and Cambridge showrooms to work with our team of experts. Let's make that spring dream a reality. And don't forget, for every $500 spent, enter for a chance to win one of three amazing prizes. Visit WayneDoor.com for more details, and we'll see you April 1st through the 6th for the Wayne Door Annual Spring Sale. 
Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. It is the top of the order to start things off for Newcomers Town. Kellish, Stahl, and Barker all do up. Currently leading two to nothing. Kellish has reached both times she has been up to the plate, but she doesn't have a hit. She reached on an error and a fielder's choice. Fouls it back, and I think she heard me say that because she fouled that one straight at me. <laughs> it is the fifth inning. If you have not done so, Subscribe to the Big Z Sports YouTube channel. Get notified every single time we go live. Plenty more softball, baseball, track action around the corner. We are supposed to have a broadcast tomorrow, but we don't have a ton of faith that that one's going to happen if you've looked at the latest weather report. Here or there, we're going to have to start building an arc now and uh, start floating that thing. Well, I was going to think a dome might make more sense, but fine. If you want to go with an arc, <laughs> that's going to have to be a big arc to fit a softball field on it. It's a 1 1 count to Keller. It was in the dirt. Anyway, just now tuning in is going, what are they talking about? <laughs> we're talking about a lot of rain tomorrow. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what we're guessing. The, the meteorologist here at Z Sports. Meets next offering. Bit too high to Kellish. You don't want me to be a meteorologist. I'm never going to get it right. Well, I'm not sure there's any meteorologist <laughs> that ever gets it right. So, uh, if any meteorologists are listening, I apologize now. <laughs> he, he doesn't really, we promise. Uh, Needs 2-1 delivery. Too high again. Yeah, I'm sure from the uh, the TV screens right now, you look on this field and we're <laughs> sitting from a nice warm press box. We kind of opened a window and said, ah, close the window. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks beautiful out here, and this is a beautiful facility. Just a little chilly with that breeze. Delivery for Meade, and that's a hot shot to right center. It's going all the way to the wall. Kellish has extra bases. She's going to make the round at two. Coach Fish is sending her to third, and she is going to be in sliding head first with a triple to lead off the inning. Well, what a great slide, too. A little stutter step there at second, seeing what the coach wants to do, and Coach brought her to third. Great slide into third for a triple. Stahl stands back in. She had an RBI double her last time up, looking to do some more damage. Again, being your opening uh, batter for your fifth inning, that's uh, put him right in the scoring position. Great opportunity for uh, the Trojans right now. Meade's ready. So is Stahl. Both will dig in. Meade kicks deals in the dirt. Petro, it goes past her, but she does keep it enough in front of her that Kellish is not going to be able to advance. Yeah, Petro doing a great job moving, sliding over there to stop the ball. And, again, if you're Maddie Kellish, no reason to try to force that one at home. You got nobody out. Kind of wonder if Bella almost tried to kind of overthrow that one a little bit. Meade's next delivery swung on and fouled back for Stahl, who I think is a little upset with herself because that was a high pitch. She she saw the eye candy and went for it. <laughs> Good. Bella not backing down at all, throwing the heat again. Yeah, those are so hard to lay off <laughs> if you're a batter. Your eyes just get really big. That ball gets real big and – well, if you can get on top of it, you can definitely throw it go a long way. That one's going past Petro. Kellish slides in safely on another pass ball. Heads up base running as she'll make it a 3 to nothing ball game. Again, you got a lot of kids these days that, you know, not very good when it comes to the, the sliding uh, into bases, but uh, Maddie Kellish on both of those great <laughs> head first uh, dives and Man, that was that was a thing of beauty. There are some coaches out there that when you dive in head first at home that are like, all right, just be a little bit more careful about that. But Kellish seemed to know what she was doing. 
You know, no, no pressure on our producer back here today, but uh, it'd be nice to have a, a Wayne Door uh, replay on those slides. <laughs> Stump gives you all three seconds to map something out there. <laughs> Stalls ahead, 3-1. <laughs> Next delivery from me, too far outside. So another base runner in the fifth inning. Mead still looking for out number one. Her team trails three to nothing at the plate. It is Barker. She had an RBI double her first time or her last time up. Again, always impressed how these freshmen can come up here and play at a varsity level because again, it is a fast game. Um, and, and Bella, again, doing a great job to this point. And uh, just letting one on. Uh, I think that's – is that her first walk of the game? Uh, I do believe it's, right. it would be. Actually, I think that's our first wash, walk issued, period. McConnell was a hit by pitch earlier on, but we won't count that. Yep. Mead's next offering. Just a bit too low. <laughs> right over the plate, though. Right <laughs> over the plate. Well, and judging by where Petro's hand was, we thought, yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs> and I want to clarify, this is not us saying the uh, the umpire's not getting these right. We just can't tell from where we are. <laughs> Mead's next delivery. It was the kind of... Check swing just started by Barker, but she didn't offer. Regardless, Mead catches the zone. It's one two. I tell you, that is. I mean, I, that is one thing I've seen so far this this young early season. We've had some good quality umpires yes. who've been very consistent, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's always a great luxury for these kids to have, and something we sometimes take for granted. That one, Petro digs it out of the dirt. Now we got a rundown. Trying to get back his stall. She'll slide in. Ball goes past the first baseman. Stall will have to stay. As the fencing kind of close here on the sides at Sandy Valley. So she will come back and talking with her first base coach, just kind of chuckling a little bit like, yeah, I don't think I handled that one right, but that's all right. No out. Eh, hey, coach, I just wanted to force him to throw it. That's that's <laughs> what I was looking to do, coach. So I think that's one of those, oh, oh, well, okay. The, <laughs> what you're normally taught is don't freeze on the base paths. And that's, well, unless it's, you know, line drive, one out, that kind of thing, but. Well, like I said, Teresa Petro did a great job of forcing her. She held on to that ball an extra second to kind of see where she was going. A great throw to second base, and unfortunately, Sandy Valley just wasn't able to finish it. Count it two and two after Barker fouls it away. I missed out on the opportunity to say, oh, we got a pickle. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Next one in the dirt. <laughs> Petro plucks it out again. Full count to Barker. Hey, that was that was a good quick call by you this time. You didn't have to wait. That was, that was good. Well done. I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> the three two offering swung on, put into play. Second baseman dives, can't quite get it. Stall will hold up at second. Thought about rounding and going for a three. Uh, Coach Fish, I think, wants to try to keep the momentum rolling. Doesn't want to mess anything like that up. Potentially, he's got two runners on now. Barker slides in with her, or I should say stands up at first with her second base knock of the game. It is Dorlin back at the plate. She had a single and a ground out in this game. Again, good hard hit. Uh, nicely covered up by uh, Sandy Valley there to hold him to first and second. Melissa with a RBI today and a single right there. Dorlin fouls it back over our heads. It'll be 0-1 <laughs> on a ball that I think was still picking up speed when it went over our heads. I tell you, it's a beautiful press box facility, but we've already been warned what happens when it hits the top of it. So everyone kind of braced themselves for a loud boing on the say, top of it. Everybody watching right now is going to because they're going to hear it too. <laughs> well, let's see. It seems like every time we say something, these girls take it as a challenge. Let's see if Thorlin tries to do it now. Meads next delivery, picked out of the dirt by Petro. It's one one to Dorlin.
Mead gets the call. She'll tow the rubber again. Swung on, fouled over our heads. One and two. <laughs> Not quite straight up enough. <laughs> and again, boy, Dorland's fouling these straight back, and they are sharp. They are sharply hit. Yeah, again, uh, Bell and Mead doing a nice job battling. You got Alyssa Barker just hit a nice hard single, and Cam Dorland right now going battle. So there's a lot of good quality battles going on right now. A lot of pitches being thrown this uh, inning for Bella. Next delivery, too far in the dirt. Dorland now has it ahead, or sorry, even at two and two. I was going to say too far inside, and for some reason I said too far in the dirt. Figure that one out. <laughs> Good at bat for Dorland, fouling a couple of these offs, not biting on the inside heat. We'll see if Mead goes outside. She will. And just couldn't quite catch the zone. It was up. Teresa Petro doing all she could do to try to frame that thing and, and made the umpire think about it. And, uh, again, uh, trying to do her job to try to frame that the best she could. Full count upcoming. Two runners on, nobody out. In this fifth inning, Newcomerstown already has the 3 to nothing lead. That one's cranked to the left side and just off the glove of the left fielder. Coach Fish is going to send Stahl home. And cruising into third safely is Barker as Dorland delivers an RBI double. Again, we talked about how hard those balls are. That was a nicely sharp hitting ball. And, again, not very far off the uh, the turf right there. And, again, very hard to judge tailing away from her and unfortunately went off her glove and it was, ends it, up on second. It was a good break by Daisy. Just couldn't quite get there. It was tailing fast towards the – Third baseline, Little stands back in. She has struck out twice. She will put that one into play down the right side, but it'll go foul. <laughs> Claxon Communications crew almost having to dive out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Casey Claxon's at home going, protect the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Take one for the team. Take one for the team. <laughs> Of course, we always have to thank Casey and his crew for all the hard work they put in every single season. Meade's ready. Her next delivery, Little, puts it into play to the second baseman and running home, trying to go home with the play is Sandy Valley, but Barker is going to beat the throw. It is an RBI for Little. Yeah, good play there by McKenna Burke. Again, just not a really sharp ball there. Probably could have gone to first to get that one out. Uh, tried to get the play at home, just uh, not in time. It will be runners at the corners because Dorland wisely advanced as well. Watson's coming to the plate, and Coach Courtney Geiger wants a mound meeting with Meade and her infield. I have not actually seen anybody – I mean, I haven't looked necessarily back here – anybody warming up nope. for the Cardinals. So I'd imagine they're still going to roll with Meade. Trojans so far a three-run fifth inning. Got the 5 to nothing lead. Again, no outs right now. You're feeling good. You're halfway through. You have a full run of your lineup now, and it's just one base knock at a time. Well, and if you're Coach Geiger right now, again, you got a freshman on the mound right now. It's still early in the season. These really can become teaching moments, you know, to kind of, hey, we got to grow from this. This is a good place where either, you know, we can – get strong and, and get some girls out here, we can fold right now. So, again, uh, I think a good uh, confidence booster by Coach Geiger to keep her in there right now. She's had a great game up to this point and uh, see if she can dig herself out of this hole. Watson, a fly out and a strikeout. She'll stand in, foul the first one off the mask of Petro. Ouch. Yeah, that doesn't feel too good. Oh, they got a helmet on. It's fine. No, you you still feel it. I said I think that came off the mask onto her shoulder too, and uh, yeah, those those don't tickle. Meads 0-1 delivery. Watson holds back. There goes the runner, and advancing up to second safely will be Little. Tried to throw to Nicholson short from shortstop. And Dorland was not biting on it. 
Newcomers does such a good time, a good job of just having that little crack open and really putting a lot of a pressure on your catcher, your pitcher. Um, got him here at second, third, and a lead uh, right now, five nothing, and looking to break it wide open. Petro has to pluck it out of the sky as Meade couldn't find the upper outer part of the zone. She's behind two one. Tell you what, been uh, impressed with uh, Teresa Petro, too. Only a sophomore right now behind the plate. She's done a great job catching this game. Next delivery from Meade is going to be up in the zone. It's 3-1. Sixth batter this inning at the plate in Watson. Looking to do more damage with two in scoring position. Trying to find a gap. And also find her first base hit of the ball game. Give herself a little bit more wiggle room as she's on the mound, of course, for the Trojans. Next delivery from me. That's going to catch the zone. We'll go to a full count. Painted the outside corner. And still we have newcomers here just trying to put all the pressure back on Bella Mead to make her throw a lot of strikes. They've gone really deep in the count, several of them this inning. Meade's next delivery too far outside, and you saw the hold back by Watson. Oh, she thought about it. Instead, it'll load him up with Morris coming to the plate. She has popped out too short both times. Coach Fish giving her some instructions from the third base coach's box, saying if you can get this one on a line, anything in a gap is going to score probably two. Sandy Valley doing the right thing, too, bringing their infielders a couple steps in, try to get that uh, play at home, try to get the, the front runner. Meade's first delivery, going to be just above the letters. Always imp I'm impressed with both these lineups with the amount of underclassmen that are in them and just contributing some really good innings for both these sides. That's a promising sign for the future of both of these programs. Yeah, there's a lot of coaching that goes into that. You forget about all the Little League coaches. Morris pops it up, medium depth, and it's going to fall. And now almost they were going to have a throw into second for Philo, but the second baseman couldn't quite get over there in time. So it is a bloop single. Everybody moves up a base, and it's an RBI that time for Morris. Yeah, it's going to oops RBI, and you'll take it. Advancing home was Dorland, who scored little up to third. Watson stands at second. While Morris is at first, it's Johnson at the plate. She delivered a single, and she has struck out in this game. If you're Sandy Valley kind of shaking your head, saying, man, what do we got to do to get it out this inning right now? And Well, Nicholson and Philo were both running as hard as they could for that ball. Again, it's just another one that drops right in the perfect spot. The, the C&I dogs. Meade delivers. Too high. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about the underclassmen they do, and, and again, that says a lot about your, your youth program that you have in these communities. you got some good, uh, you know, coaches bringing them up. Back up the middle, and that's going to be a two-RBI single for Johnson. Philo can't handle it in center, and holding up at third base is Morris. Johnson, she stayed at first. Two RBIs for the right fielder. Brandy Morris doing a good job getting over to third base. McConnell will stand in, the ninth batter this inning. Lead has grown to 8 to nothing now for Newcomerstown. Six run, fifth inning. Right back up the middle for Johnson, exactly where you want to hit that ball. Find the open gap. If you can get it past me, there's a lot of space between the second baseman and shortstop, that ball to get through. Well, and you said it earlier, Nick, you know, just opening just that little bit of crack and how they take advantage of it, and this team definitely has. McConnell tries to bunt down the first baseline, but it goes fell. So far in this game, she had a hit by pitch, eventually thrown out at third trying to advance, and she ground out. Meade ready again. 
Show Rocket deal. McConnell puts it into play. In between the first baseman and second baseman, another run's going to score. And advancing over to third is Johnson. On the throw, she is safe. And advancing to second is McConnell. Seeing a single and RBI again for the Trojans. <laughs> Morris came in to score. Johnson stands at third. McConnell advancing on the single to second on the throw. Coach Geiger wants another mound visit here with her infield. And it looks like we are going to have a pitching change. We're going to go ahead and take a quick timeout as we are going to have our next pitcher be warming up. Big Z Sports is back for more IVC softball after this. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. I'm really feeling the love from Sandy Valley from Adam Sueski right now as we have the pitching change. Stepping in on the mound will now be McKenna Burke. She slides in from second base. It'll be Meade who goes over to second in her place. It's a 9 to nothing lead that Newcomerstown has. They've got both runners in scoring position. They have now batted around as Kellish comes back up to the plate at the top of the order. And again, great game pitch by Bella. Just one inning is all it yep. took. Her first four innings, again, had a great job. Uh, again, her uh, her future is bright here for the Sandy Valley Cardinals. Kellish watches ball number one. The thing that has been just incredible, and we've already made mention of it, but just where these hits have been placed for Newcomerstown. You can't place them better. They've just, they've just gone into the – Every gap they could possibly find. And, that, and that's just one of those nights. Either, you know, sometimes it's just not your night. Popped up infield. Should be handled easily there by Burke for out number one. Burke really didn't have to come too far. I don't think she even left the pitching circle no. to make that catch. <laughs> Next up, it'll be Stahl in this inning. She had a walk, eventually came around to score. And... One of only two walks issued in this game so far. Yeah, RBI earlier in the game, third inning. Burke delivers. It is going to be just a bit too high to stall the third baseman for the Trojans. We were seeing her make a lot of snags over there at third in the pregame warm-ups. Hasn't really had too many opportunities during this game. Good defensive piece over there at the hot corner for the Trojans. Next delivery is going to be on the inside corner, just a bit too far in. In fact, it's 2-0 to stall. Yeah, Newcomerstown has a, a good left side of the field between Maddie Kellish and uh, and Larissa Stall here. They they uh, they're going to be strong here coming uh, throughout this season into tournament play. Stall tries to turn on it, but she pops it up and trailing towards the oh. fence, just can't quite make the play over there at third for the Cardinals. Is Douglas? It went off of her glove and went out of play. Said great, uh, great try there. Unfortunately, had uh, right the fence coming right there, and uh, tried to get her hand out, try to find where it was, couldn't quite do it. Burke's delivery stall puts it down the third baseline, but it's going to go just foul. Count even at two and two. Burke getting the call again at the 2-2 count. Stall, you know, just itching to bring both those runs home. Left fielder playing the line. 
Delivery from Burke. Stahl puts it towards the second baseman just off the edge of her glove in Mead. One run comes around. Second run, thinking about it, but going back now to third. Snap throw down from Petro's not in time as McConnell held up and returned. It is an RBI. I would award it probably a single, single for yep. Stahl and advancing there after that throw down from Petro. So McConnell stands at third, Stahl at second. Barker coming up to the plate with one gone. Again, that's one thing this Newcomerstown softball team does really well is run bases, and they have continued to put the pressure on Sandy Valley. Delivery from Burke, too far in. Newcomerstown now 10 to do nothing lead. Trojans still rolling in this inning. Delivery is going to be... Bit low. too low for Burke. <laughs> you had confidence in that. Low. <laughs> <laughs> Burke is ready. Too far inside. It's 3 0. Be sure to check out the Big Z Sports Facebook page. We'll have results posted from other area games as well as this one throughout tonight. Next delivery from Burke's right down Broadway. Strike one. Lots of great action going on all throughout Z Country. Some really barn burner games in some of these in the early season action. You know, you always wonder how these teams are going to come out. Barker puts a drive on it, left side, and it is going to be caught out there by Daisy and advancing from third is going to be McConnell and running from second and tagging up that time is also going to be Stahl. So it is an RBI fly out for Barker, or I should say sacrifice fly for Barker. What a catch. Holy mackerel. I thought that was way over her That's head That's what instead. I thought, too. That was a nice fabulous play. catch. And I believe we were kind of talking there, Stump. McConnell, maybe a little bit of a jump, we thought, but regardless, no uh, conversation related to that. Stahl stands at third. Time called here by the next batter in Dorland. Yeah, I thought, actually, I thought McConnell left uh, early as well. Dorland turns on it. Daisy makes the catch in left field, and the inning will come to an end. Newcomers Town plates nine. They lead 11 to nothing. We go on to the home side of the fifth inning. Cardinals coming up to the plate after this. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Find your path to success at Buckeye Career Center. Buckeye students earned over 3,000 industry-recognized credentials this past school year, and over 130 students participated in our school-to-work program or an internship at a local business. Let us help you get a jump start on your future in a career of landscaping and turf management, pharmacy technician, HVACR, CAD development and design, or any of our over 30 programs. Enroll today for next school year by visiting BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. Watson still on the mound for the Trojans as her offense gets her a big lead. It's 11 to nothing. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Six, seven, eight, two up for the Cardinals. Beckett, Burke, and Pomeski. Beckett, her only time up. She reached on a fielder's choice. I tell you, Octavia Daisy, a couple uh, nice plays, nice out, plays out in left field, really uh, doing a nice job for Sandy Valley. Off Always. balance, falling back, making that up. Near the fence. Again, Watson. only only a sophomore. Watson's first delivery to Beckett is cut on and missed. Like you said earlier, the uh, the future of both of these teams uh, very very bright. Watson's 0-1, too far outside to Beckett. Short. 
sure the Sandy Valley defense that last inning. Just happy to see a couple that went to them rather than these <laughs> just perfect gap shots from Newcomerstown. It was crazy to watch. Watson's next one swung on, fouled off by Beckett. She'll slip behind 1-2 in the count. Watson so far in this game been pretty masterful for her as she has only given up three hits. She scattered them across these four innings of work as she's starting off the fifth here. Again, three strikeouts for her, but nothing's been hit really hard. Again, just been moving all around the edge of that plate, doing a really nice job being in control. The off speed from Beckett doesn't find the zone, or to Beckett doesn't find the zone. She'll draw even at two and two. Watson's next delivery, Beckett pops it up, infield, going towards the second base side. Barker tracks it all the way <laughs> and makes out number one. Thankfully, she did track that the whole week. She really <laughs> went a long ways uh, circling around that ball. That ball kept getting blown in and towards first base. Burke stands back at the plate. Second baseman turned pitcher in this game. She struck out in her only plate appearance. Watson looking for another one, two, three inning. She'll deliver too far inside. <laughs> Good on Little behind the plate trying to frame that pitch, but I <laughs> don't think that uh, Clark Froelich behind the plate was going to buy that one. Hey, we talked, you know, Alyssa Barker with that nice catch there. She really had to travel if the first baseman were just taking two steps to the right. She could have <laughs> caught that thing where it ended. Swung on and missed by Burke. That's the one where off the bat the second baseman's already going mine, so the first baseman says, <laughs> nope, go right ahead. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you get them out, just as long as you get them out, right? Down the right side and just hooking foul for Burke. It'll be a 1-2 count. Watson, don't be surprised after that pitch. It was on the outside corner. I think she's going to try to bust her in. Have I guessed wrong yet? I don't think I have. I'm going to say yes. I did there. <laughs> she went off speed instead. <laughs> Couldn't drop it in the zone. It's 2-2. Two -two. Look, I was like three for four on guesses today. <laughs> And with that, I'll stay at the 750 average. <laughs> Watson ready again. Her 2-2 two -two swung on and fouled back, and I saw a little jump. That, I, I did jump on that one. That, that would have ended up right between <laughs> the old eyes on that one. That's a... Uh... I ain't as good as I once was. You think I, I, you could have yeah. caught it? <laughs> Might have been a little focus issue there too. A little like, oh geez, a little. <laughs> this this or this yellow ball keeps getting bigger and bigger as it comes right at me. Two two fouled off again by Burke. Hits the post on the cage. Trickles all the way out to stall. Again, great job of fouling off there. Just staying alive for another pitch. Another uh, great effort here between the the batter and pitching. Great duel. Watson ready again. Her delivery put into play. Picked up by Kellish across the diamond and in time with Dorland with the splits over at first to get Burke for out number two. Wow, what a nice play there. Great smothering there by the shortstop. Maddie Kellish, great throw over to first base uh, for the second out. Now to the plate. Lizzie Pomeski, the designated player. She ground out to short her first time up. Yeah, talk to the last half of the inning. What a nice luxury that is to have Maddie Kellish and Larissa Stoller on the left side of that field. And there's a prime example how they got it covered in the out. Pomeski pops it up, trailing towards the Sandy Valley dugout. It will get out of play. We're getting closer to one off the top of us. Not sure who that is. That was nicely caught by a spectator down here, yeah. too, right off the uh, end of the dugout here. Watson's delivery, Pomeski holds off on the outside corner, and it is too far away. It's 1-1. You know, it almost looked like it caught the outside corner, but the catcher almost pushed that off of the plate there instead of framing it, and uh, might have cost her a strike right there. I think she was set up a little bit farther in, maybe wasn't expecting the late-breaking action from Watson. Her delivery, inside corner. Saw Pomeski think about it. It does catch it. It's 1-2. Two 
Two gone, bottom of the fifth. Sandy Valley looking for a little bit of an offensive spark, trailing big. Watson winds, delivers off speed, too far outside the zone. <laughs> that one was about uh, <laughs> the umpire said, yeah, that's a little too far to try to bring that one that <laughs> obvious back. So. <laughs> so I saw your whole arm go yeah, back. That's a, not going to work. It's about 12 inches off the plate and <laughs> Snap, it's tried all. to frame it. Watson's next delivery, cut on and missed for Permeski. She sat down for strike three. As that will do it with the Newcomerstown Trojans picking up the 11 to nothing victory over the Sandy Valley Cardinals. What a masterful, masterful performance by Kaylee Watson on the mound in the victory. She goes the distance. You know, as you were mentioning, Stump, only a handful of strikeouts, but still very dominant from start to finish. Yeah, you got you got a good uh, team behind you there. So, again, not a really overpowering pitch right there. Just continually was framing that entire plate all game. Did a great job. Her outfielders or infielders and their outfielders did a great job keeping balls in front of them, getting uh, the solid outs, and uh, just a great overall performance by uh, the Trojans there. Certainly was. When we come back, we'll have our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show and award our McIntyre Realty Player of the Game. Newcomers Town victorious over Sandy Valley 11 to nothing. We'll be back after this. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats by their on-site butcher. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events and their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best: sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee, or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. At Kaufman Realty and Auctions, you've got options. Your property is unique, and our agents know how to sell it. Whether it's a traditional listing or live auction, we'll earn you top dollar. Our agents will utilize whichever method of sale works best. When buying or selling your next home, call on Kaufman. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. One final time today from Sandy Valley. It is the Dumont Sporting Goods post-game show as we will wrap up everything here today. What an inning for the Newcomerstown Trojans in the top of five that, you know, realistically stumped. That was the entire difference maker in this ball game. They batted around, went all the way down to the uh, fourth batter in their lineup uh, during that inning as well for the second straight time. Pretty much everybody picking up a hit, at least in RBI. It was just a great performance. Yeah, up to that point, it was two nothing. I mean, it's it's either either team's ball game at that point, and, and Newcomers Town comes up that fifth inning and really takes care of business. And and once that crack opened, I mean, they just opened the floodgates there and uh, really put a lot of pressure on Sandy Valley uh, for a, for a great fifth inning to close it out. 
So the, the loss will go to Bella Mead on the mound. And for the Trojans, listen to this. RBI double for Larissa Stahl. RBI double for Alyssa Barker. RBI double for Cam Dorland. RBI single for Bri Briley Little. And an RBI single for Brandy Morris. A two RBI single for Riley Johnson. RBI single for Mika Michaela McConnell as well. And a sacrifice RBI uh, for Barker too. So she technically does have the two RBIs as well. But that was basically all in one inning. And that's what we talked about. You know, we're trying to pick our uh, McInturf uh, player of the game. And we're <laughs> like, oh, yeah, who, who do we give it to? This, I mean, this one, you, you got to give that one to the whole team. And that's what makes Newcomers Town so strong right now is they have – all sorts of players stepping up, and and when you have the fielding that they do, when you got the pitching that they do, and you got a lot of people like you just mentioned with the RBIs, it makes for a very dangerous team. Well, it definitely does. The name that we went with with our McInturf Realty Player of the Game, we had a real hard time doing this because everybody had so many RBIs and such. We went with somebody who had a, a triple, came around to score twice, and made some great defensive plays. It is shortstop Maddie Kellish who we went with with our McIntyre Realty Player of the Game because she was a rock defensively and also had some very nice at-bats at the plate as well. Reached, uh, She was two for three at the plate, in fact, so a good game for her. Yeah, great offensively, but again, some great plays uh, also on the defensive end to really keep uh, Sandy Valley at bay today. Um, the, the Both of those left uh, left side of that field between Larissa Stahl and Maddie Kellish, again, doing a great job uh, of playing their positions. And uh, like I said, uh, they're, they're going to have a lot of success this year. They certainly will, as that does it for today's presentation of high school softball out of the IVC. 11 to nothing, Newcomers Town tops Sandy Valley. And we are supposed to have a broadcast tomorrow. We'll see if it ends up happening or not due to the uh, monsoon that might be coming in. But you'll just have to wait and see. If you get subscribed to our YouTube channel, you do get notified every time we go live. So you'll know tomorrow afternoon at about 3.40 if that's what uh, ends up happening. Like I said, hopefully, uh, like I said, there should be some good uh, games tomorrow. And hopefully Mother Nature cooperates uh, just long enough for us to get some games in. And we'll see what happens. It's not that we have a whole bunch of faith with that. A big thank you to <laughs> uh, the Sandy Valley uh, School District for all their hospitality throughout today. Great facility. We are going to be happy to be back here again soon. And four, go ahead, stump. Yeah, a lot. Of, I mean, good and good game today too. You know, Sandy Valley girls again on the on the wrong end of the game today, but a lot of good things to look forward for the rest of the season. Uh, again, young team in there, very mixed with a lot of underclassmen. A lot of good things to happen in their future as well. Certainly for the Claxon Communications crew and Aaron Stump, I'm Nick McWilliams. Be sure to tune back in with Big Z Sports once again at a diamond near you soon. Final score today, 11 to nothing. Newcomers Town tops Sandy Valley. So long for now, Z Country. Thanks for watching this Claxon Communications production of High School Sports on the Big Z Sports YouTube channel. For the latest news and scores, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter at Big underscore Z Sports, and on Instagram. Don't miss any of the live stream coverage all season long by simply subscribing for free to Big Z Sports on our YouTube channel. For the best in high school sports coverage, there is only one Big Z Sports.